I'm Melissa Chavez, and I'm here with Open Source Bridge uh, 2011. And today I'm here with? I'm Michael Ernst uh, from the University of Washington. OK. And um, I wanted to ask you today, uh, what are you speaking about at the conference this week? So I actually gave two talks today. One was about how we can improve the Java programming language by strengthening its type system. And the other was about how we can improve the Java, type, uh, the Java programming language by weakening its type system. Those are very interesting, uh, kind of diverse uh, <laughs> talks. So it may sound like it's different, but in each case, uh, it's really about putting the programmer in charge. It's about letting the programmer do what the programmer wants to do, when the programmer wants to do it, rather than, uh, than believing that one person who's designed your language or designed your IDE ahead of time has perfect precognition of what you need at any moment. What I want to do is put power back in the hands of programmers to let them do the tasks they want to do when they want to do them, and thus have, a, have more fun writing code and produce better quality code. That sounds great. Um, how did you get involved with the open source community? So I've been contributing to open source projects for at least 25 years. Uh, I've found that uh, when I want to do work, if I have access to the code, then I can be much more effective. I can customize. And I like giving back. You know, there's no way that I could have been as successful as I've been so far without uh, tremendous amounts of free software. And uh, I like to help other people. I mean, I'm a scientist. So what I want is for people to be able to stand on one of their shoulders to do more and more. And that's why I like to make my code available. That's why I like to make my data sets available. In, in the end, what I'm trying to do is change the way to, I'm, I'm a, interested in programming languages and software engineering. What I want to do is change the way programmers think and act. And the way to do that is by giving them the tools so that they can, uh, can act differently than they have been so far. Um, and one of the things you just said was that uh, you're a scientist, but I understand that you're also a teacher uh, as your profession. And so my next question is, how would you get more people involved? And what are you doing specifically uh, at the university level to get more people involved? Right. So as, as a university professor, I really have uh, two jobs. I wear two hats. Part of my job is to advance the, uh, the state of the art, is to advance human knowledge. And there what I'm doing is d uh, devising new ways to think about problems, uh, new type systems, new programming languages, new environments, uh, new tools, uh, thinking about how can, can people interact with code in different ways than they have, in more effective ways than they have before. The other half of my job is to, uh, to instruct uh, educate and inspire a generation of students so that uh, and what I want to do is, again, there are two things. One is to help them understand what the state of the art is, help them to, to use really good practices to, to see the beauty of abstraction, of modularity, of specification, of design, to, to see how uh, programming can be so much more than hacking, to help them understand problems and then master those, and, uh, and to see the changes they can can uh, make in the world as a result of that. But the other thing that I want to inspire in them is, uh, is the beauty of discovery, is seeing the new things that they can do, uh, uh, understanding that they don't, they don't just have to use the intellectual tools that have been, uh, been created by others in the past, but they can actually be a part of that. So of course, we use a lot of open source tools. Um, and equally importantly, whenever I teach a class, I always try to uh, give them some cutting edge tool. So about half of the time, this is a big success, and they get inspired by the things that can be done. And about half of the time, it's a terrible failure. Uh, it's a success in that it's exposing them to something, uh, some new uh, crazy idea. And you know, crazy ideas are good half the time and bad half the time. It, I wouldn't be doing my job as a researcher if everything was predictable. But in any event, they get exposed to this, and then they can go on and have even better ideas, maybe, than the, one that, the, the ones that I've been able to expose them to. Uh, and you said that half of them fail, and why would that be? Oh, just because uh, the f so you can have a novel idea, a new idea, a different way of thinking about things. And you can imagine how uh, programmers could put this into practice. They could use it in the following way. It could be helpful to them for the following purpose. Um, but the fact that it's a new, innovative idea does not mean that it's a good idea. 
for instance, when I, uh, when I think about a new way for people to build software or programming languages, I always think about doing a theoretical proof to show that it's sound, to show that it actually works. But if I only, if I only did that, the job would be half done. I'm only interested in research where we can both show some beautiful theoretical property about it, where we know it's correct, and where it's also useful. And uh, so I, I really want to do both of those in all the work that I do. I mean, and that's part of the reason, I mean, you, you, you started this out by asking what I talked about here. That's part of the reason that I'm here. I mean, this is not the community where uh, university professors usually come to talk about their work. Uh, I, I gave talks on this same material just a couple weeks ago at a conference that was full of other researchers and professors and students. And there, I talked more about the theoretical underpinnings and such. But here, I'm really trying to connect with practitioners. Because again, I won't be satisfied if the only impact that I have is getting a lot of citations or getting a lot of other people in the research community to think about it. I, I really uh, want people to, I, I want to impact the way that real programmers uh, work in the world. And so some of my projects end up being successes in that way. Uh, for instance, the one that I talked about, uh, Oracle plans to incorporate in Java 8. Uh, on the other hand, others fail. And you know, those we work on for a while, we declare victory, and then we move on to the next thing. That's one of the reasons that I have a fantastic job, is that I get to work on so many different exciting things. I get to work on things where everyone else tells me, Mike, that's a stupid idea. You're a smart guy. Don't waste your time on that. You know what? Sometimes they're right, but sometimes they're wrong. And it's fun either way. Um, so you seem like a very passionate guy. And I was going to ask you, um, what are your, some of your other passions? Um, so the thing that I spend most of my time with is my family. We, we go out hiking in the mountains uh, almost every weekend. Uh, we go on bicycle rides. You know, I, uh, I do a lot of work like that. Uh, in the past, when I didn't have a family and had more time for other things, I, uh, I did many other things. I've been on the, non on the boards of a few nonprofits, I've founded one. Uh, I like to juggle. I can juggle five balls. But that's not actually that much fun. What's really fun is juggling pins with someone else. Uh, I've also done some performance swing dancing, and it's, it's very similar. It's, it's one thing to, to do a routine by yourself, but it's much more fun to improvise. And that's what juggling pins with a partner is like. That's what swing dancing is like. Because you, uh, you do something, and then the other person does something, and then you do a riff off of that. Uh, it's just this beautiful interaction where you're, uh, you're working with other people in the community, not just by yourself. And that's what I think people can do in, uh, who are programmers, who are in the open source community. It's, uh, you know, you have to have this certain technical expertise, but you also want to connect to other people. That's one of the things that makes it so rewarding for me.